में चर्चा करेगा तो वो स्टार्ट करेंगे सो टुडे विल बी स्टार्टिंग आवर थर्ड चैप्टर स्टार्ट कर वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड आवर थर्ड चैप्टर वी हैड एन इंट्रोडक्शन रिगार्डिंग द थर्ड चैप्टर डैम फ्री वाइब्रेशंस इन द डैम फ्री वाइब्रेशन वी विल बी इट इज अ डैम बेसिकली इट इज डैम वाइब्रेशन बट फ्री फ्री वाइब्रेशन आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द फ्री वाइब्रेशन and uh, uh, force vibration it is a damp the one but it is a free vibration free vibration means there no continuous force is being applied to the system but the system is damp we have put a damper over here so let us analyze the system in this way so this is a, a system in which a uh, stiffness member is there k is a stiffness member so c is a damper over here because we have already uh, told that say uh, damp so this is the mass which has been uh, suspended over it like this now uh, this system presently is in equilibrium and uh, the yellow line uh, shows the equilibrium condition like that now what i do i pull this mass in this way and leave it and i pull this mass up to a uh, let it be displacement of x i am pulling this mass up to a displacement of x so that i will be leaving it so we can derive a view from the figure also that the moment due to the mass uh, due to the moment of the mass in the downward the direction this is the this displacement this is velocity and this is the acceleration in the downward direction due to the motion of this mass in the downward direction what kind of forces will be derived in the system let us see from the equation from the equation we can very well analyze so this is the h is the resistive force offered by the Spring or the stiffness member in the ball. Secondly, C X dot. This is the coefficient of uh, damping coefficient multiplied by the velocity. So this is the damping force offered by the damper. So this will obviously it will also be opposing the motion. Uh, that is why it is in the upward direction. And third force is the M X double dot. So this is the inertial. This is the inertial force M X double dot which has been introduced by applying the Lambert principle. So now uh, we will analyze these all these forces. This is the FBD of the system. Uh, this is the FBD of the system. We will be analyzing the forces by doing this FBD. So K X is the upward direction. So K X is over here. K X is the stiffness force of the resistive force offered by the stiffness number or the spring. C X double C X dot is the resistive force or the viscous resistive force by the damper or the damping force offered by the damper. Third one is the M X double dot. This is the inertial force offered by the D damper principle. Equal to zero. So this becomes equation number one. Now we can very well view it from this equation. The equation number one is the second order degree at x double dot. This is the second order differential. This is the second order differential equation with a single degree of freedom. I already told you in my uh, introductory lecture of mechanical vibration what is the meaning of degree of freedom. Here it is the only one one specific number one is also the degree of freedom can only be the one. If two mass are attached simultaneously, one mass is over here. After that, one spring or a damper is there. After that, one mass is there, another mass is there. In that case, the degree of freedom will be two. And in the similar way, three to four and twenty to degree of freedom. So right now, on the diagram itself, it is quite clear. So the system is the single degree, uh, sing, uh, single degree of freedom system. Point number one. Secondly, it is a second order differential equation. Because this is the d square x upon d t square. So that is the second. Uh, Second order equation, and the solution of such an equation is given by uh, in, in such a case the x will be given by s t, where s is the constant which is to be determined, which will be determined in the slide number two. Let us see how to determine. Uh, first of all, x equal to e s to power s t. We will differentiate this one. X equal to s power s. Second step is x dot, which we are differentiating with this with this two times. So as e s to power s t as it is, so as <coughs> comes over here. Similarly, x double dot e s to power s t into s square. Quite clear from the thing. Let us see. So step number five put these values of x 
x dot and x double dot in equation number one. We will be putting the value of x over here. X equal to e raised to power s. <coughs> Secondly, x dot x dot का value जो होगा s into e raised to power s भी यहाँ put करेंगे. Third point में x double dot का value हम s square into e raised to power s भी put करेंगे. So let's see. So in the step number six, we have we have put the value. K into x is over here. K की जगह x का value मैंने e raised to power s भी put किया. सिमिलरली एक्स डॉट का जो वैल्यू था मेरे पास एक्स डॉट का वैल्यू था एस इंटू एस टू और एस डी वो मैंने यहाँ पे छोड़ दिया सिमिलरली एक्स डबल डॉट का वैल्यू ही एस स्क्वायर इंटू एस एस टू और एस डी था वो मैंने यहाँ पे छोड़ दिया नाउ अब इस सिचुएशन को पूरे को मैंने रीअरेंज कर दिया मैं Further solving, further solving, we have taken we have taken the e raised to power s t as a common and cancelling it. After cancelling it, I am left with this equation: m s square plus c s plus k equal to zero. So the nature of this equation is quadratic. We can compare it is a quadratic equation. We can compare this equation with the quadratic equation. I have written a quadratic equation: b x square plus b x plus c. You know this equation very well. So if I compare the quotients of these two equations, so a will be equal to m, a will be equal to m. Similarly, b will be equal to c, c, and similarly, c will be equal to k. k. So you know the quotients very well. Moreover, you also know the solution minus b plus minus b square minus four s is equal to k. So we will have two solutions or two roots of this equation s one and s two. So our result is in step number ten, s one two means two roots are there. Minus b means minus b. B is the value of plus c here. Minus c plus minus c here. Minus four at the point zero. So s one will be equal to one. In one case, it will be taking over here plus, and in the second group, it will be taking over here as minus. minus. So bringing this two n inside of this group, bringing this two n inside of this group. So by taking this two n inside of this group, so the equation of s one becomes like that. Similarly, S2 equation of S2 becomes like that. So we have been successful in obtaining the two roots S1 and S2 as well. Yes. So the, therefore, the solution of the equation, because I already defined that in step number three, the solution of the um, in that case will be x equal to e raised to power s3. Since we have been uh, able to make the two roots. So there will be two solutions: x equal to e raised to power s one t and x equal to e raised to power s two t. So finally, the general solution of this differential equation will be x equal to e raised to power s one t plus e raised to power s two t, where a and b are the constants which can be determined by applying the conditions, which we will be learning in our next lecture. So uh, after that, uh, we will. Uh, What is the meaning of critical damping coefficient? So this term is associated with this mathematical generally what we have solved over here. Uh, see this S1 and S2 very carefully. If I make the this term as zero, which is under root, the complete term which is under root in S1 and S2. If I make this term as zero, will S1 be equal to S2 or not? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So. Critical then is the radial sign of S1 and S2 in step 11. Radial sign means the uh, term which is under root. If the radial sign of the uh, radial sign of S1 and S2 becomes the value uh, uh, becomes zero, I my becomes zero becomes zero. The value of C at that moment is called as the critical damping coefficient. Critical damping coefficient. Moreover, at this value, if this under root term becomes zero, similarly, as two also under root term becomes zero, as one will be equal to as two. And at that point, the value of c, the value of c will be equal to c c. And this c c is known as the critical damping coefficient. Now we will also see what is the physical significance of. Uh, critical damping coefficient.
the auxiliary method when we look at the radial sign becomes 0 then s1 will be equal to s2 and at that point the value of c will be called as the critical value. So what is the physical significance of this uh, c? That is the important thing. So let us uh, try to understand it uh, from this slide number 3 also. Now, for c equal to cc, for c equal to cc we have already told that the radial sign should be 0 on in s1 and s2. The radial sign in S1 equal to C upon C upon 2 and equal to uh, square minus square which must be equal to 0. So we are applying that condition for C equal to C C. Or uh, I am cancelling this rule from here. C by C C the whole square must be equal to K by M. Or C by C C 4 M square and in brackets this is the equal to K by M. 4 M square to my upper layer to yaha se mera the C C aare 2 into root of k m are there, point number 1. Point number 2 also c by c, c by 2 m equal to may write it as may write this term c by c c equal to k by m. Ye root khata ne ke liye square root ko ta ni na square root ta ni ne ko root ki bana sakta hum. May do. Or k by m ne ko ta omega n ke rubber hain. I know this term. Omega n equal to root of k by m ta sabi ko maanu ma hai. So I can put it as a omega n. Now, 2m to me na maa liya hai, so may I write it as cc equal to 2m into omega n? May I write it as cc gave m hai, may I write it as 2m hai, yaa me iski saan bada sakta hoon? Yes sir. So cc equal to 2m into omega n iksa ta ho na? Yes sir. Similarly, equal to 2 into k m ye wa nikra na yaa pe iksa sakta ho, iki baat ho. Sara iti equal to cc ke hai na, ho iki sara hai. सारा कुछ इक्वल टू सीसी के अंदर आइए पूरी इट लाइक है एंड यहाँ पे बात की है वो इसके बाद एक टर्म नेक्स्ट टर्म और आज जितना अंडरस्टैंड करेंगे और इनका फिजिकल सिग्निफिकेंस हम नेक्स्ट लाइक चल रहे हैं भाई ये भी तो मैथमेटिकल है मैं देख लिया पर इस सीसी ये इसमें वैल्यू इसके दो नाम हैं डैम्पिंग रेशो ये डैम्पिंग फैक्टर बहुत आसान से मिलती है। तो डैम्पिंग रेशो और डैम्पिंग फैक्टर इस शॉन बाय सीजा एंड इट इस द रेशो ऑफ सी अपॉन सी 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 अपॉन सी सी इस द डैम्पिंग कॉफिशन डिवाइडेड बाय द क्रिटिकल डैम्पिंग। सो इक्वल टू सी अपॉन दिस इज योर डैम्पिंग so, this is equal to C upon CC, where CC equal to 2M omega, where CC equal to 2M omega, actually to put the value. Now, C upon 2M is the classic asset, omega and omega are the classic asset. CM is the C by 2M is the classic asset. Omega and I am the classic asset. So we are in the next step in the system, we are writing this equation as omega n into zeta equal to c by 2 m, am I right? So many more are? Second point, k by n equal to omega n square, am I right? Can you say that, Mr. Because I know omega n equal to root of k by n. So k by n will be equal to omega n square, right or wrong? Yes, sir. Put these values, these are the two values in hand. C by 2 m का और K by m का ये सारे वैल्यू आपने S1 और S2 में रख दिया S1 और S2 कौन से हैं आपके जो root का वैल्यू निकाला था S1 का वैल्यू हमने निकाला था यहाँ पे root का सॉल्व किया था S1 का minus C by 2 m plus root of C by 2 m का whole square minus K by m इसके अंदर हमने वैल्यू क्या C by 2 m का वैल्यू क्या है आपका omega n into zeta Yes? Yes, sir. Similarly, K by M का value क्या है आपका? Omega n square. N square. So we are putting the same value. Look the board carefully. Minus S का से C by M का value minus zeta omega n plus minus C by two M का value जो है आपका omega zeta square into omega n का whole square हो जाएगा. ये square है ना तो तो का C by M zeta into omega n का whole square हो जाएगा. Minus K by M आपका ये है. इसमें से ओमेगा एन में बाहर निकाल देता हूँ। यहाँ से जो ओमेगा एन का कोमन आ सकता है, तो ये पूरी ट्रांस में ओमेगा एन कोमन आ जाएगा। तो यहाँ से बचेगा ओमेगा एन कटाने के लिए माइनस बीटा प्लस 
ये कर सो दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सम सिमिलरली द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सम विल बी इक्वल टू ऑन द साइन विल बी चेंज ओवर हियर प्लस माइनस सो दिस साइन इज चेंज टू द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सम नाउ वी आर आई हैव बीन सक्सेसफुल इन कन्वर्टिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सम एंड एक्सम इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ओमेगा एंड थीटा मींस के इफ आई नो द वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा एंड द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द सिस्टम आई कैन नो द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सम एंड एक्सम सो दिस इज द Summary of the lecture the why I am doing that. Moreover, second point, what is our physical significance of zeta? Zeta is zeta is greater than one. This system will be called as overdamped. What is the meaning of overdamped? That will be understanding. If the system is equal to one, that is known as the critically damped. And third one is the underdamped. The system is uh, the zeta is less than one. Value of zeta is less than one. Then the system will be called as the Critical uh, sorry, under damped system less than one. Now, if the system is uh, greater than one, if zeta with the value of uh, zeta is uh, greater than one, the system will be called as over damped. Over damped means you don't need that kind of damping. You are putting the shock up of it trap in a car. That is the meaning is called as over damping. You are putting the shock up of a car in a scooter. That is over damping. You don't need that kind of damping. Second point, critically damped means that okay, you you are putting that much damping. Uh, it is optimum kind of damping you can put. जितना आपको चाहिए उतना आप उसको दे रहे हैं. Third point is under damped. Under damped means that okay, you are putting the car shockers into the truck. In a truck. Clear? So this 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 three things we will be discussing in detail. And we'll be solving the derivation also in our uh, next lecture. Means tomorrow we'll be studying also. Thank you.